Columbia University President Manoush Shafik refused to tell lawmakers Wednesday whether, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free counts as an anti-Semitic phrase, instead only calling it hurtful and adding that she would prefer not to hear it around the Ivy League campus. Shafik, appearing alongside Columbia Law Dean Emeritus David Skizer and two members of the Morningside Heights University's Board of Trustees, Claire Shipman and David Greenwald, faced an onslaught of questions from members of the House Education and Workforce Committee about her handling of anti-Jew demonstrations and violence since the Hamas terror group's October 7 attack against Israel. The president defended her work by citing a letter sent to students outlining appropriate language to use as well as the creation of specific places for protests to take place in order to protect students from having to hear the chants. But across several heated back and forths, Shafik refused to say whether the phrase from the river to the sea was actually allowed under school policy, saying that it is a difficult issue. Some of those expressions that you have said, river to the sea, intifada, are incredibly hurtful, said Shafik at one point, without clarifying whether those statements violated Columbia's code of conduct. Professor Skizer, head of the anti-Semitism task force at Columbia, gave a very clear answer. Yes, Representative Kevin Kiley, Republican California, told Shafik during his line of questioning. You, on the other hand, hemmed and hawed and then eventually said, I hear them as such, some people don't. I'm glad that Professor Skizer was able to give us a very clear answer, yes, but you weren't able to do so, Kylie added. And I think if I were to go through another number of racial slurs and ask you if those are offensive, if those are racist, I don't think you'd say, I hear them as such, some people don't, would you? I'm happy to give you my personal opinion, but I think the question that you're really asking me is, are they forbidden to be said at Columbia? Shafik said, sidestepping the question. That's not what I'm asking actually. I'm wondering, who are you worried about offending? That's my question, Kylie pressed, prompting Shafik to double down on her evasion. The Californian went on to probe how many hours the Columbia president had spent preparing for the hearing, pointing out that she had offered very divergent responses as to some of the worst offending professors about how they've been handled. Why is that? Why can't you just give us the facts? Kylie demanded. Would you be willing to make just a statement right now to any members of the faculty at your university that if they engage in anti-Semitic words or conduct that they should find another place to work? Any faculty member at Columbia who behaves in an anti-Semitic way or in any discriminatory way should find somewhere else to go, Shafik repeated. Committee Chairwoman Virginia Fox accused Shafik of gross negligence at the top of Wednesday's hearing, calling attention to the environment on campus following the October 7 assault, which killed an estimated 1,200 people, including 33 Americans. Columbia stands guilty of gross negligence at best and at worst has become a platform for those supporting terrorism and violence against the Jewish people, said Fox, Republican North Carolina. That a taxpayer-funded institution became a forum for the promotion of terrorism raises serious questions, she added. I need not remind you that this is not just a moral duty, but a legal duty set forth in Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Shafik agreed that the events of October 7 brought to the fore an undercurrent of anti-Semitism, but maintained that Columbia had taken immediate action in the wake of the deadliest day for the Jewish people since the Holocaust. I attended a vigil for the victims on October 9th. We held daily meetings of our campus security committee. We brought in extra security expertise and have regular contact with NYPD and the FBI, Shafik told panel members. She acknowledged that trying to reconcile the free speech rights of those who wanted to protest and the rights of Jewish students to be in an environment free of discrimination and harassment has been the central challenge on our campus. That challenge became clear at the start of the hearing, as self-described, anti-Zionist, Columbia students shouted to be led into the hearing room, and Republican lawmakers grilled the panel about the university's fostering of anti-Semitic faculty and permissive approach to violations of its code of conduct. The presidents of Harvard University, MIT, and the University of Pennsylvania shocked panel members in December when pressed by House GOP Conference Chairwoman Elise Stefanik, Republican New York, on whether calls for the genocide of Jews violated their school's codes of conduct. Harvard's Claudine Gay, MIT's Sally Kornbluth, and Upin's Liz McGill all said the statements would depend on context. 
Gay and McGill have since resigned from their posts following the latter's dismal performance before Congress and the former facing pressure from her testimony and a subsequent plagiarism probe. By contrast, all of Wednesday's witnesses affirmed that such calls would violate Columbia's code of conduct. But when asked by Representative Kathy Manning, Democrat North Carolina, whether calls to globalize the Intifada were acceptable at Columbia, Shafik demurred. I personally find it unacceptable, the president said. Our current rules have not specified that is not acceptable. Representative Tim Wahlberg, Republican Michigan, also confronted Shafik over Professor Joseph Massad, who referred to Hamas attack on Israel as awesome. Shafik said Massad had been spoken to since then and told that his language was unacceptable, but none of the witnesses would say whether he is still being allowed to teach courses. Stefanik called for the dismissal of Massad as chair of an academic review committee at the university, revealing that past claims he had already been removed from that post were contradicted by the school's own website. Greenwald agreed that Massad's comments were abhorrent and one of the steps that we could take in terms of discipline is to remove him from that leadership position. Will you make the commitment to remove him as chair? Stefanik demanded of Shafik. I think that would be, I think I would, yes. Let me come back with yes, she said. But I think I just want to confirm his current status before I reply. We'll take that as a yes, Stefanik said, that you will confirm that he will no longer be chair. The witnesses also gave few details about the hiring process for Mohammed Abdu, a visiting professor in the Modern Arab Studies Department who espoused support for Hamas, Hezbollah, and Islamic Jihad just days after October 7, and was later terminated. He will never work at Columbia again, Shafik said of Abdu. Today's hearing of Columbia University president and board members epitomizes the failed leadership on elite college campuses to combat anti-Semitism and protect Jewish students. Stefanik declared in a statement after the hearing from the university president's moral equivocation on anti-Semitism to glaringly inconsistent testimony regarding disciplinary action and lack thereof taken against anti-Semitic students and pro-terrorist faculty to astonish.